Well, it's Christmas. Now, there's been this trend of taking Christmas songs and turning them into movies. With Frosty and Rudolph, you could kind of understand because those songs tell a story. But what if you did that with a song that no one likes? Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer is a charming song about a drunk elderly woman dying from vehicular assault. I honestly have no idea why this song is popular. It's not even good or really even creative. Maybe as a joke song. But it's been a tradition for decades. Why? Anyone could come up with a song like this. Just take something bad and make a Christmas theme. Santa bombed the fuck out of Cambodia in Laos. Kept the war raging in Vietnam. Sorry about that, I guess due to recent events I have certain war crimes on the mind. Seriously, this song is so fucking stupid. I have no idea how anyone could say anything bad about Paul McCartney's Christmas song when we have shit like this on the radio. The only Christmas song that's worse than this one is probably the one about the shoes. Oh my god, my mom's gonna fucking die! Holy fucking shit! Hey, hey, whoa, 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 this is a Christmas song. You know, jolly stuff for the spirit of giving, what the hell are you doing? MY MOM'S GONNA FUCKING DIE! Way to ruin the holiday, dickwad. I like how this song is made by a group called New Song. You hear that new song? Well, who's it by? New song. I know it's a new song, but who made it? It's new song. I know it's a fucking new song. Yes, I am aware Patton Oswalt technically did that joke before, but who cares? It's Christmas. Fuck you. Anyways, time to look at the 2000 movie based on Grandma I Got Run Over by Reindeer. It's the Christmas season. A time for telling colorful holiday stories. The narrator of this movie is an older version of the kid who is the main character. Real creative. He, as well as his grandpa character, are played by none other than Elmo Shropshire. Shropshire, I don't know. He goes by Dr. Elmo. That's his uh, musical stage name, if you will. Now, he's the singer of the original song that this movie is based off of. He also wrote most of the other songs in this. However, we're going to run into something very strange. Grandma got run over by a reindeer Walking home from our house Christmas Eve Who the fuck is this? This is not Dr. Elmo. Why is he not singing his own song? You literally have him in this damn movie to voice not one, but two different roles. And yet he can't sing his song that got this movie made in the first place? But it gets weirder because literally none of the songs in this movie are performed by Dr. Elmo. Why? There's even a scene where the grandpa character, voiced by fucking Dr. Elmo, gets his own song, and they swap out the voice for the other guy as soon as it starts. I could not even imagine what they were thinking. No such thing as Santa, but as for grandpa. Okay, she had plenty of time to react there. You know, you'd think she'd fall backwards considering how she got hit head on. Hell, the lyrics even specify her having hoof prints in her forehead. It was December, and everyone in Cityville was caught up in the chaos of the holidays. Yep, Cityville. Like, why not just make it New York or something if you give this little of a shit? Check it out. It was a one-of-a-kind place. And just looks like a Cracker Barrel without the restaurant, bro. At least one of anything you could imagine for the holidays. And the guy behind the store has anything you need for after the holidays. That's me, Jake Spankenheimer. Cousin Mel is scaring away another customer. You can stop right there. That shoplifting missy. No money, no merchandise. You know, I like how Cousin Mel was like the villain of this movie, and the first thing she does is tries to stop someone from taking something without paying. Like, if she had asked Grandma about paying later, that'd be one thing, but she was just literally about to walk out the fucking door with it. Your credit is always good here, Martha. Why, you just stop by when you get your next paycheck. Thanks, Grandma. Everyone have a Merry Christmas! Is her legal name just Grandma? I mean, they don't call her anything else in this, so... You're not a businesswoman. You're an old fruitcake! By the end of this movie, you're gonna wish fruitcake never existed, believe me. A set of replacement wheels for my rollerblades. So how old exactly is this narrator who is the older version of Jake? During his childhood, he has voice to text and email. Now I know nowadays it's been a few decades, but this was made in 2000. 
Email was still pretty new back in those days. Daphne, stop teasing your brother! How much of this movie is just Kathleen Barr? She plays like four characters in this. Tell her, Mom! Santa Claus is real! Well, there is no easy answer. Uh, historically, there was a Saint Nick who, with a loving heart, filled children's shoes with gifts of all sorts. See, here's the big problem with this movie, and many other Christmas movies. They have this whole Santa thing be faith-based, with some people not believing in him. The problem is that Santa is legitimately real here. So where the fuck does everyone think the presents come from? Does Santa just drug people? If there was some explanation, then maybe. But how the hell can people not believe in Santa yet don't question the presents just showing up in their house every year? You can't just have concrete evidence of his existence, but also have people not believe in him. You have to pick one! So Santa today represents the true meaning of Christmas. Giving to others. Look at me. Look at me! Dad, is Santa Claus real? You're telling me this kid is like 12 and he's never really had this conversation once with his parents at any point in time? That's not a Christmas tree. If you're looking at the new inflatable Christmas tree manufactured by the Cityville Own All Corporation. How does a company like Own All Corp start out? Like on day one, are they just going, oh, we don't own all yet, but we will. <laughs> God damn it, Joe. What does it remind you of? It looks like a dick, okay? A fucking dick. Are you happy? <laughs> Wish they had Christmas trees like that when I was a boy. Here we go again. What a bunch of disrespectful little shits. Earl, chill out. Wait, why the hell did everyone just come in here? I'm, I'm kind of doing a review right now. Yeah, but Christmas is about us all being together. Why, hello there, old sport. He said it! He said it! But we're messing up the dynamic now. You gotta ease into that kind of thing. You can't just have the whole cast show up a few minutes in. Imagine a first-time viewer of our show watching this episode. He'd be like, who the fuck are these guys? Deal with it! Believe me, I had no interest in this bullshit. But review bot don't me into it. I think the reviews are better when we do them together. Okay, okay. Can we just get back into it now? Jesus, next fucking someone's gonna show up. We had to chop our trees down by hand. Never forget the time I had to use a beaver for a chainsaw. Beaver for a chainsaw. Ah! Grandpa passed off his fucking meds. Okay, everyone, gather around your dad. I want a video of our first inflatable tree. Then why weren't you filming when he was setting it up? Ah. Where's the jabbing yourself with pine needles, hanging ornaments, the old-fashioned smell of a genuine Douglas fir? If you like old-fashioned smells, I'll get my fishing boot! If we proceed to rip a loud fart after saying if you like old-fashioned smells, this would instead become the greatest Christmas show of all time. Of course it would. Why is this guy in shadows when he is in broad daylight? Excuse me, I'm... Austin Box! CEO of the Cityville Own All Corporation! Grandma says you own everything. Well, not yet. Good God, where's good old Teddy Roosevelt when you need him? Say, you wouldn't happen to have an extra elf costume I could wear? Nope, sorry, but there's a troll costume. Why the fuck would you walk into a business deal dressed as an elf? Your store sits on the perfect place to build the crown jewel of my empire. Picture it. Gifts delivered on Christmas Eve by our new Slaymobile. Somehow that doesn't seem like a great investment. Jake, do you think I should sell the store? Are you kidding? If he had just said yes, then would she have sold the store right then and there? I love this place. What the fuck is wrong with his eyes? You with no store would be like Christmas without Santa. Thanks for reminding me of a better movie. Thank you. And you can keep the troll costume. Well, yeah. I think we paid for it already. That was my future! I mean, Jake's future. Money for college. I mean, considering the house they live in seems wealthy enough, but Mel does have a point about the college fund thing. Grandma, if this store were mine, I'd sell it. Cousin Mel, this store will never be yours. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The way I see it, you can divide the world into two groups, people who like fruitcake and all the rest of us. The holidays were upon us and things were going fine. Ah, yes, a song about a damn fruitcake. Fruitcake that nobody likes, yet everyone buys anyway. God damn it, writers, you had one job. Tougher than a truckload of all beef jerky. Drier than a drought in Albuquerque. They very clearly reused that background. Grandma's killer fruitcake. Ah, uh, you're a great helper, Jake. Now just stir that bowl of ingredients and it's ready for the oven. Grandma, Jake, I'm afraid Doofus got out again. I can't find him anywhere. I don't know who buys your cakes and cookies, but this will for darn sure make everyone sick. That ought to stop people from shopping at the store. They just sang a song about how nobody likes the fruitcake. So if they eat it and get sick, they'll probably just assume it's because the fruitcake was bad to begin with. That song really screws up the plot of this movie and it's only in it because it's by Dr. Elmo. This was right next to the fireplace. Wait, so how long were you expecting them to be gone for? Shouldn't you have hid the dog somewhere beforehand so they'd actually be away from the batter for a good while? Oh, <laughs> must have missed him. <gasps> he very clearly saw her contaminate the fruitcake. You didn't say anything? Why? Why even bother showing him notice it then? Careful, Grandma. Don't drink too much eggnog without your medication. Oh, poo. You'd think at my age you'd outgrow an allergy to eggs. <laughs> now, where'd I put those pills? Really? An allergy? I guess they didn't want the whole she'd been drinking too much eggnog line from the song to reference alcohol. I like how an elderly woman getting trampled by a bunch of animals is okay, but a two second alcohol reference isn't. I put Jack in my eggnog, though. Who's gonna help me with the decorating? Can't. Half the my boyfriend. Sorry, Grandma, gotta dash to the Ooh, gym. Oh, yes! Those gyms that are open at 10 at night on Christmas Eve. Is this guy gonna fuck his grandma? Honestly, I wouldn't put it past Dr. Elmo to write a song about that. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Damn, she can clearly hear the song in the background, but still goes out anyway. I mean, that's basically asking for it. Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. See, it appears she lives in this house with everyone else. So it's like she's already home. Grandpa, we believe. Well, I'm fixing to take these extra cookies and cakes to the volunteers at the Cityville Community Services building. It's too late to go out now, Grandma. If I had had some help, I would have been finished hours ago. I was busy. Sorry, had to finish my homework. Last minute shopping. Do these people not have a car or hell, at least one of them could have offered to go with her? She'd been drinking too much eggnog. You've been drinking too much eggnog. And we begged her not to Please, go. Please, don't go. We're begging. But she forgot her medication. Besides, I left my medication at the store. And she staggered out the door into the snow. Don't you love it when they just repeat everything? Don't you love it when they just repeat everything? It's really fucking annoying and unnecessary. It's really fucking annoying and unnecessary. Makes me cringe. Makes me cringe. Do you mind? Do you mind? Left my medication at the store. Pharmacies are barely open past 5 p.m. on a normal day, and you'd think they'd be open this late on fucking Christmas Eve? Great job with key framing that vector image. I hope you got paid handsomely. From our oh, house Grandma, Christmas Eve. watch out! You can say there's no such thing as Santa. <laughs> good, good God, you can't tell me that isn't unintentionally hilarious. I don't know how they made an elderly woman getting hit by a flying vehicle funny, but they did. Hurry! Grandma got run over by Santa's reindeer! Jake, close the door and get in here. Oh, Santa hit Grandma! Grandma needs help! Oh, Jake, calm down. Take a breath. Okay, Santa Claus was flying low like this, and Grandma was walking like this, and then Rudolph was here, and... Now, honey, you must have had a bad dream. Ah, uh, there's an old lady face down in the snow right now. Maybe you want to do something about it. Even if they don't believe the Santa part, they still were already worried about Grandma going out at this time of night. Old people fall all the time, especially if there's snow outside. Your son suffers from a dreaded affliction. 
What affliction? The Santa Claus is real syndrome. He's got all the symptoms. Writing lists to Santa, checking them twice, good behavior, falling asleep before midnight. Where do the goddamn presents come from then? Does Santa just fly around for show? You saw what happened, didn't you, Grandpa? Uh, I'm sorry. Were you talking to me? He wants to even in the fucking room. Why would he have seen it? I was too busy watching Grandma get run over by a reindeer drawn sleigh. Yes! What a sight! You seem a bit happy about that. Sleigh come out of nowhere. Grandma takes a header into the snowbank. Sleigh vanishes. Like the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah, Grandpa is really off his meds. You've got to go help Grandma! Nothing is out there. Wait, is the sun coming up? How fucking long have they been talking? That's right, officer. Missing. Hit by Santa's sleigh. Yes, we've been drinking eggnog. Oh, so they still make the alcohol reference anyway. Oh well. When we found her Christmas morning At the scene of the attack See? Uh, you didn't find her Christmas morning. There's no one there. She had hoof prints on her forehead and incriminating claws marks on her back. No, she doesn't sing her voice. You are a fucking moron. Okay, we've got some reindeer hoof prints and sleigh tread marks leading to... Oh, yeah! What appears to be an impression of a person in the snow. Look there, but uh, how do we know it's Grandma? Sure, a hit and run may have happened here, but if it wasn't Grandma, who cares? What do you make of this? Offhand, I'd say that's animal hair, reindeer, 15 hands high, 12 point buck. By the markings, a sleigh puller, powerful, capable of flight, age unknown, one of a team of eight. Okay then, I'll just put it down a sleigh, hecular hit and run. Ooh, what's the code for that? Does this movie take place in Canada or are these two random cops just supposed to be very stereotypical Canadian? You should remember that one. It's a 1224. 1224. <laughs> I get it. 1224, day before Christmas. Uh, don't make me play the clip. If you have to explain a joke, there is no joke! I'd like to know where Grandma is. Good point. We can work the Santa angle later. Better get looking for the old Brad. You ever just casually refer to the missing beloved relative of a family as the old Brad right in front of them? That started the biggest grandma hunt in Cityville history. Wait, is this, this just a regular, regular thing? thing? I even got permission to put Grandma's picture on milk cartons. Nothing helped. Maybe put her fucking name? What, is her legal name Grandma? I already mentioned that. Oh. See, this is why I don't want people showing up mid-review. Grandma was nowhere to be found. Nine months later. You've heard of movies like Die Hard, which aren't technically Christmas movies, but take place during Christmas? Well, how about a Christmas movie that doesn't take place during Christmas? Grandma's Christmas gifts remained unopened, and people dressed in black. The bitch is dead. Merry Christmas, kids. Mom and Dad tried their best, but without Grandma, customers stopped coming in. Well, go to somewhere else. You can't tell me what to do. It's Grandma's store. You still did what she said, though. Unfortunately, your name's not on the deed, just Grandma and Grandpa's, but if Grandpa agrees, then I could buy the store. I'll cure your sorrow. We'll spruce up the store, order new merchandise, hire a baker. It's right here in these papers. All you have to do is sign. Sing? No, sign. Sure. So, sign. I'd rather sing. That has to be the most forced music number I've ever seen. Like, they really couldn't find any better way to lead into that. Grandma spending Christmas with the superstars Since that reindeer ran her down that fateful night Grandma's hanging out with all those late great stars For the heavenliest Christmas of her life He doesn't really seem too bent out of shape over the death of his wife. Come on, who doesn't sing jolly tunes about the recently deceased? Grandma's hanging out with all the- Is that her? Is that her? What the fuck? What? Why? What? Why? So that song was completely pointless, especially seeing as, may I remind you, they swapped out Dr. Elmo's voice for it. Why exactly are all the these in Grandpa's name? 
Why not put the parents in it as well? I don't think it's a secret that Grandpa isn't all there. Uh, this is it. The last of Grandma's fruitcakes from last Christmas. Oh, do you think it's still good? Are you even allowed to do that? What do we do when it's sold? You're gonna sell a year-old fruitcake that you dropped on the floor. This place needed to be shut down years ago. Nothing! How did she even hear what they said earlier? You can clearly hear the door opening, meaning she was outside beforehand. Because we're gonna be rich! We won the lottery! Well, you know what that means. Get your rocks out, everyone. It isn't fair! It isn't fair! It isn't right! <laughs> Our boats come in! Cousin Mel says we won the lottery! I gotta give it to the dad's voice. He actually tried with that line. <laughs> Actually, I'm going over to see Austin Bucks and sell this dump for millions. Thank Grandpa. Millions. This place was way for fucking millions. Jesus Christ, you could open another store with that kind of money. Jake, Grandma, what the fuck is wrong with you? Grandpa, how could you do that? I thought I was helping. Yeah, man, it's only millions of dollars. I get that Cousin Mel is probably going to take most, if not all that money, but you've been sitting on this golden goose for nine months, and they already established that the store was doing poorly. Your own fault. Talk about having your cake and eating it too. Please don't sell that, it's far past the five second rule by now. Please, please don't buy Grandma's store. Too late, kid. With this last piece of property, Mr. Bucks will own all of Cityville. Who are you? Cousin Mel's attorney. I am Slime. You said it, not me. You can't make that joke when it doesn't mean anything. Like, I am Slime isn't a name. The whole pun doesn't work. In Incredibles 2, they had a character named Devil Endeavor. You know, like Evil Endeavor, so that pun makes sense. But I am Slime does not mean anything. Even I am mean makes more sense. A bit of advice. If you really believe Grandma was run over by Sanders' reindeer, then find him. He should know where Grandma is. If there's one thing about this that actually isn't bad, it's that the rich guy actually isn't a jerk. He obviously likes money and power, but he seems to be an alright guy for the most part. Look, Sherlock, you've tried your best to find Grandma. Your room is Search Central. Give it up. Why is she so against trying to find her own Grandma? It's not as simple as adding fine grandma to my Christmas list and emailing it to Santa Claus. Wait. Doofus, you're a genius! Wait, you're telling me nine months, nine fucking months went by, and only now he decides to try and contact Santa to ask where his grandma is? Kid, what the fuck are we doing here? None! Not a single letter from Cityville! It's as if they're too busy with their prefabricated, mass-produced lives to need me anymore. Excuse me. Well, I might as well shave my beard and cancel the holidays in Sunnyvale. What? All over one city? In one part of the world? How is that fair to everyone else? So we find that Santa was keeping Grandma at the North Pole this whole time. He didn't take her to a hospital or try to get in contact with anyone. He just abducted her. Santa knows who everyone's house is to deliver presents to, but couldn't figure out where Grandma lives. She was like two yards from her house. You couldn't get an elf to stay back and go to the police or anything? Call off the hound! Shh, not him. Uh, no, I think the correct answer is, HOLY SHIT, SOMEONE IS TRYING TO BREAK INTO MY ROOM! You're an elf! The genuine article. Someone in the writer's room must have been dying to put the E.T. reference in this and everyone else was like, no, so they compromised and put whatever the hell this is. Grandpa, I'm going to the North Pole to find Grandma! Fine. Thanks for telling me. That was probably the only actual funny part of this. Old St. Nick and Mrs. Claus decided just this year There won't be any Christmas The feeling's just not here Another completely pointless song. You better have a good reason why you broke elf code and brought a human here. Isn't that exactly what you did when you brought Grandma back to the North Pole? Okay, I'll bite. Who is he? Oh, no. It's me, Jake. Don't you remember? Eh, uh, nope. 
I like how Santa never bothers to mention the whole amnesia thing to Jake. Quincy, keep an eye on things. Right, boss. Why did you leave Grandma in the sleigh in the first place? Why not bring her up with you? Thing made my reindeer go waha. Waha! Follow me, guys. I tried to stop them, but nothing worked. Everything went black. Oh, I better get you medical attention. Quincy, leave a note explaining what happened. Uh, no, that's not how it works. If you hit someone with your car, you can't just leave a piece of paper on the side of the road and then leave, especially considering how there's snow out. And again, she's literally right outside her fucking house. Santa's breaking the law here. Grandma! We couldn't find her anywhere. She's missing again! Since Grandma is nowhere to be found, and the man in the red suit here admitted he ran over her, I demand that you have Santa arrested for the disappearance of Grandma. Honestly, I can't really disagree with her here. Santa's been arrested! I thought people didn't believe in Santa. That seems more newsworthy than him being in jail. Lucky thing she still has a case of amnesia and doesn't know who you are. Lucky is right, but we can't keep her locked up in here forever. Don't ask me when they got this Breaking Bad cab and they just kind of had it. Santa Claus must be worth a fortune. Considering he supplies gifts to everyone in the world, that's 2.5 billion times. Where the fuck are you getting those numbers from? The world population hasn't been 2.5 billion since the 50s. I think I mentioned this part in an older Christmas review I did once, so it's interesting how we've come full circle here. It's already been established that Grandpa is easy to manipulate, so who's to say Jake can't make a convincing argument for him not to sue Sarah? Yeah, this whole plan relies on a lot of things going right. I'm at the courthouse where the sensational Santa Claus trial is reaching its climax. It's already December, and after weeks of testimony... It's December. So nothing interesting happened within those three months. Wouldn't Austin Bucks' place have security cameras or something they could use to see where Grandma was taken off to anyway? Time to deal with some Christmas chicanery. What can I do, Grandpa? Find Grandma. Again. Maybe she didn't wander off. But everyone loves Grandma. Who would do such a thing? Cousin Mel! Three months. Three fucking months. And only now they think that maybe foul play was at hand, and the person who obviously would have been responsible for it was who was responsible for it. This movie makes my brain hurt, man. What you smell? Grandma? Oh my god! Cousin Mel chopped her up into pieces and stuffed her in the backpack! Keep it up, doofus! So that's where she was going. You didn't really need the dog. You could just follow her. Okay, but don't take too long. Have a safe, fire-free day. Good job. I came as soon as I received your email, Master Jake. Don't ask me how he got the elf to show up and help him so fast. I've given up at this point. Grandma, I don't have a lot of time to explain, but we're going to the store. What's at the store? Your memory. I think you should tell the rest of the family you found Grandma first. Tell me again why I'm baking two cakes. One's with your recipe, the other uses the stuff in the vial I found at Cousin Mel's cabin. And this is your famous homemade fruitcake that, uh, a lot of people liked. Jake, what am I doing here? Grandma! You remember! How the fuck does that give you the impression she remembers? You already told her your name to begin with. That's it. She eats the shitty ass fruitcake and the memory is back. How fucking lazy can you get? Santa is innocent! I'm Grandma, and I'm not missing. Apart! Since Grandma isn't missing, I hereby rule that Santa Claus is innocent of causing her disappearance. I mean, he still hit her with the fucking sleigh. Isn't that something worth looking into? There are still the charges of Slay Hickler hit and run and leaving the scene of an accident. Yeah, exactly. If you and the jury would taste this fruitcake. Oh. 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 Oh.
Wait, so they all like it? So then what was with the whole song about grandma's killer fruitcake thing? Now taste state's evidence number 12 found where grandma disappeared. These pieces had an extra ingredient in them from this vial of bad stuff found at Cousin Mel's cabin. You could even prove what was in that vial. You could have poisoned them all. You see, Your Honor, it had the effect of reindeer nip. That's why the reindeer knocked over Grandma. It wasn't Santa's reckless driving. I feel like you're still responsible for what your animals do. Like, if your dog mauls someone because they're holding a hamburger, that doesn't suddenly mean you weren't responsible. But was this Cousin Mel's whole plan? That Santa would be exactly in the right position exactly when Grandma just so happened to need to leave the house late at night and his reindeer weren't trained enough to not go after reindeer nip? Like, how the fuck does Cousin Mel even know that Santa's real for this plan to work in the first place? Literally no one but Jake and Grandma seem to think Santa is real, so why does she expect this to work? And if she wasn't expecting Santa to run her over and just expected the fruitcakes to taste bad, even though the movie already showed us that they supposedly tasted bad even before reindeer nip was added, then why use reindeer nip of all things? That's an oddly specific thing to add. You could probably get the same effect if you just added salt and pepper or hot sauce. But as I mentioned earlier, Jake saw her with the fucking vial and didn't say anything. So this whole thing could have been avoided if everyone in this movie wasn't so fucking stupid. The boy has done it again. I rule that Santa is also innocent of the hit and run charge. I like how they just take his word for it that the reindeer nip was in the fruitcakes like it couldn't be falsifying evidence. And I suppose Jake has an answer to the charge of leaving the scene of an accident? Slay Hickular negligence? This is a note Santa left at the accident scene explaining everything. Dust it for fingerprints. Dust it for fingerprints. Santa wears mittens, dude. And also, Santa told the elf to leave the note. The elf also wears gloves, so there should be no fingerprints. Maybe you could check the handwriting, but I don't think leaving a note undoes the fact that he left the scene of the crime. Why should we even believe the note was there in the first place if nobody saw it? Why the fuck did Cousin Mel keep it for nine months? Why didn't she just throw it out right away? WHY? 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 All right, I admit it. Yes, yes, I did it. I hid the note. And I made Grandpa sign over his rights to the store. Way to fucking incriminate yourself, dumbass. The only thing I guess they had going for you was that your fingerprints were maybe on the note. But that's pretty flimsy considering they could have just written that note on any paper that Cousin Mel had already touched at some point. Even so, your attorney is sitting right fucking there. Why the hell are you talking? I'm behind this evil trial. And? And I hate the goody goody feelings of Christmas. That has to be the laziest way to end this. They just have Cousin Mel flat out admit to everything for no good reason. Could they not think of any better way to finish this court scene? That's what you get for being selfish and stupid. As if she's the only stupid person in this movie. Grandma, I want to talk to you about your store. <sighs> Young man, after everything Jake has gone through, do you really think I'm going to sell? I don't want to buy it. I want to franchise it. Open Spangenheimer general stores all over the country. Yeah, I'm sure that'll go well. What? Oh, oh, oh no. Unfortunately for everyone, that was the one that did her in. Santa was arrested again, this time for manslaughter, and Christmas went back to being ruined. So that was The Grandma Got Run Over by a Ranger Movie, and what a surprise, it was pretty bad. Not only does the script make absolutely no sense, but there's very little charm to this. Everything's just so lazy and half-assed. The songs just feel like they're in there for obligation, and really don't have any rhyme or reason to be in there. You would think that the movie is just for kids, but then why bother making the overly convoluted story, and why have the movie basically turned to To Kill a Mockingbird for the last 20 minutes? This movie is pretty forgettable, and honestly, I'm just glad it's finally over with. I'd give it a 1 out of 10, but the girls are kinda hot, so I'll give it a 2 out of 10. I swear, how many of these crappy Christmas specials are there? We could honestly just make this show entirely about reviewing crappy Christmas movies all year round, and we probably never run out of material. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to do the series anymore if it was all about that. Christmas is a fucking gay holiday anyway. Star Trek won me along with you in these retarded episodes. 
Merry Christmas, everyone, and thanks for watching. Hey, Joe, you want to do heroin and then walk around the neighborhood staring at Christmas lights until we pass out? Uh, uh I don't have veins to stick the needle in. Okay, more for me then. <laughs> ho, ho, ho.